Ya ha ha, you found me. <laughs> I'm making a cork cosplay. In Breath of the Wild, you can discover 900 of these little hidden forest dudes and their mini puzzles. I love this game. I love these delightful little dudes. I'm spending a farcical amount of time becoming one. We're gonna get to the outfit I designed in a bit. I'm actually starting this cosplay build by turning this purse I got off Poshmark into like a Coric seed bag. So something to hold my phone, but also look really cool. First step is replacing the shoulder strap. So I'm cutting off the thin pleather bit and making my own. It's just nylon webbing I've got lying around, covered in fabric I'm going to use in the outfit. We love a coordinated color scheme. This cylinder shape is pretty easy to pattern around, so I drafted a cover and I'm stitching it together. To soften the edges, I've glued some knit fabric around the purse before I slide on the cover, and to give it that really cartoony look, I'm stuffing it with batting towards the bottom. For the fake stitches, I'm just wrapping foam rectangles in wool and gluing them on. I think it's looking pretty cute so far, so tune into the next part to see how the rest of it goes. Yahaha, you found me again! We're trekking along on our Quark cosplay from Breath of the Wild by turning this Poshmark purse into a bag full of seeds. I mean seeds, come on, we all know what they are. I'm heat forming some foam to make a nice beefy cuff here on the lid, so this way when the purse is closed, it'll look like it's just an open top bag. Before I decorate that though, I'm gonna detail the flappy bit. Very technical term. I'm taking the little icon that shows up on the map when you find a coric and isolating that in Photoshop, which then gets cut on some foil I had lying around. I'm using fabric that I'll be making the rest of the cosplay out of, and after trying a few different things that I didn't love, I think I wanna make this little Girl Scout badge thing have some hand stitching around the edges. We glue her on and we wait. To finish the top cuff, I'm covering a strip of thin foam and some fabric that I've had in my stash since 2010 and hot gluing it on. The bag is looking so cute, but things are about to get weird, so tune into the next part and see what the heck is going on here. Ya ha ha, I am back, back, back again to finish this part of my Korok cosplay from Breath of the Wild. We already turned this purse from Poshmark into a cute little Zelda-style bag, and now it's time to fill it with golden seeds, quote unquote. I want the bag to look like it's overflowing, so I'm building a base out of foam and warbler scraps first to really get it up there. Since the seeds glow in the game, I'm taking some spare fairy lights I've got lying around and gluing them along the brim. It's gonna look pretty subtle, which is exactly what I'm going for. For the seeds themselves, I'm using warbler crystal pellets and jacquard gold pigment. When you heat the pellets and work the pigment in, the metallic effect is really cool and really luminous without using paint. This technique is honestly really tricky to time properly and without burning yourself, so fair warning. I'm wrapping these golden pancakes around paper scraps to conserve materials, and once the strange little pie crust is all the way covered, which takes forever, we are done! I am in love with this prop, I think it looks so so cool. I hope you join me next time for our next project, which will be making a fit for these forest guys. Yahaha, yeah, ha, we are back in business and making an outfit inspired by Koroks from Breath of the Wild. So I'm cosplaying one of these gremlins, and I already built a functional prop bag full of seeds that I think turned out so so cute. Now we just gotta figure out what a tree spirit would wear, and sew that. Easy peasy. To start, I'm grabbing my favorite pair of vintage shorts and just kinda remaking them out of this nice brown wool. I like shorts, they're comfy and easy to wear. Absolutely none of this is going to be visible on the finished cosplay, but unfortunately, I am just too much of a perfectionist to make these, like, sloppy. <laughs> these are giving very School of Rock when I first try them on, but cuffing them gives it a little more whimsy and a little less Jack Black. I got this knit top off Poshmark, and it's gonna go great underneath the strange little overalls-style shirt I have planned. Making that mock-up is our next step, and oh my gosh, I don't know why I made this part so complicated. If you're feeling extra curious, the full design breakdown is up now on my Kofi. otherwise check back in later to see the beautiful butterfly that Chrysalis is out of this wacky muslin mock-up. Hahaha, ha, ha, you did it! You found me! Me, the fool who is neck deep in making an outfit inspired by Corix from Breath of the Wild. We already made some shorts for this cosplay, and now we're trying to figure out the pattern for a kind of apron-y overalls top. I designed this going off of a lot of traveler NPCs from the game, but giving it like a crunchy goblin core cottage core vibe. This pattern got really complicated really fast because I just love suffering, and once the muslin is done, I'm taking it all apart to commence making the guy. I got super lucky and found some incredible fabric that looks just like wood. To give it a little extra zhuzh, I'm making my own bias tape and satin stitching on some interface details along the waistband and the edge of the peplum. Also, I'm fully lining this, which is a very funny joke. A joke where I'm the punchline. To get the pleats right, I basically had to make the peplum in one piece and the overall bits in another and get the waistband in another and then bring them all together on one side and hand tack the other side. It got complicated, it got messy, it took so many episodes of Dimension 20, but after so much Tetris, we we're finally starting to get there. Oh gosh, tune in next time. Yahaha, ha, lizard's back! Tell a friend! And yes, you guessed it, we're building our Korok cosplay from Breath of the Wild. 
So much has already happened, but today we gotta switch gears because I can't let these plain old boots be plain old boots. I looked at a lot of references of Zelda characters to figure out what I wanted to do, and I'm starting with some kind of strappy situation down here using stretch suede. I'm pulling some fabric coverable buttons from my stash from like five years ago to embellish them a little more. Once that part is done, we're patterning a cover for the top. Also, if you want to see the full design for this whole build, it is up right now at the link that lives where all links live here. The flap took a while to pattern correctly, but we finally got it and we can start stitching this funky combo of stretch and non-stretch fabric. To decorate the cover, I patterned some wood grain like swirls, which I'm going to make out of unevenly cut suede strips that I'm hand sewing down. This took literal days, but I think it looks so cool. I'm making a quick cover for the zipper, adding some fake lace details like the ones we have on our bag, and with that, our footwear is complete! What are those? So get ready, because that means next time we're bringing it all together. Yahaha, can you even believe you found me again, the Korok cosplay person? It's been a minute because honestly, I've been so busy working on this. We already made a cute seed bag and a whole dang outfit inspired by Zelda NPCs with a crunchy, grungy forest twist. So next up is making our little tree branch hood. I'm using a material called Foss Shape that's basically a thermoplastic felt. It gets used a lot for hats. I'm taking some dollar store tin foil and sculpting the branches as best I can, then I'm heat forming the Foss Shape around that and tacking it down. It's definitely not the smoothest thing in the world, but luckily we're trying to look like a literal tree. Also, I know I could have made a cute little fascinator or beret for this, but honestly, I really want the full weird cork experience. Who doesn't want to look like this? Once I get my cursed little Finn the human hat done, I grab some muslin and try to drape some swirls. I mark these with a marker, and then I realize I should just paint these with brown paint. Then comes the really tricky part, spray basting and hand tacking down spandex to start to fill in these swirls. It's all happening, and boy howdy, will we get even tree eater next time. Haha, <laughs> you found me! Astonishing! We're moving and grooving on our Korok cosplay from Breath of the Wild. We are making it happen and sculpting this funny little branches hood. I'm ready to become a literal tree. The base is looking really solid. It's made out of a thermoplastic felt that we can sew through. I'm hand tacking down spandex to cover the swirls and painting it a skosh darker. For the darker swirls, I'm taking some faux suede and slashing it in uneven strips. Then I'm pinning these to the hood in an artful barky pattern, being mindful of the nap and hand tacking them down with embroidery floss. I can't lie to y'all, this took days. Like wake up, sew, sleep, repeat. I watched literally three different campaigns of Dimension 20. After honestly about a week, I finally finished this part. As is the way with cosplay, after all that careful craftsmanship, the next part was all hot glue, baby. For the lighter swirls, I'm draping some scuba to get a pattern and a regularly pleating, you guessed it, spandex. I love that this way I can mask the seams by just folding the fabric. I'm throwing on a quick bit of paint and oh my god, after weeks of work, we are done. I'm truly obsessed, but a Korok is nothing without their little leaf mask, so tune in soon for it all coming together. Haha, <laughs> we're back in business! I've been working on a Korok cosplay from Breath of the Wild for a few months now. We made a bag, we made a whole outfit, and we spent weeks hand sewing a funky little tree trunk hood. But we gotta take our Zelda vibes to the next level, so I decided to recreate four of the little puzzle signs from the game as teensy props. I'm not sure yet how these are gonna go on the cosplay, that's a problem for future Lizard. Let's start with the easiest one, which is the Korok stump. Michaels came in clutch with a $2.99 Christmas ornament that I'm repurposing. I basically just pull up a picture of the leaf on my phone and try to approximate that. Love a quote-unquote organic design that means I don't need to be too precise with the details. Once we have our outline, I prime the wood and I color in the leaf with some acrylic paint. You know, it's not the greatest paint job in the world, but I was getting my painting legs back under me and I think it turned out fine. That means it's time for our next little guy. Yes, it's time to make the giant acorn as a teeny acorn. I'm feeling weirdly intimidated by the, like, sphericalness of this shape, but you know, I believe in us. No joke, y'all, your support on this build series has meant the world to me, so come back soon to see this egg transform. Ahaha, it's Korok time! We are taking our Korok cosplay project over the top and over the finish line by making some tiny prop accessories based on puzzles from the game. Our Korok tree stump is looking cute, now we're sculpting a nice egg in this trying time, by which I mean we're making a Korok acorn. This weird foam clay egg dries for a few days and then I sand the crap out of it. Whipping out the trusty bag of warbler scraps, I make the little acorn cap complete with tiny stem. I'm using flex bond to seal these mainly because that's what I already have. Then it's paint time! I don't really know what I'm doing as far as painting, which is fine for the cap, which is supposed to look pretty rough, but way nerve-wracking for the super precise swirl. I'm just taking it slow and using thin coats and doing my best. I already have some leaves on hand that I cut smaller to pop under the cap, and then on goes the cap. Y'all, for my mega fear how it did turn out, this is one of my favorite things I've ever made. Like, don't you just want to pop it with an arrow? Two out of four Korok props are done. Please come back though to check out some groundbreaking florals for spring. Yahaha, and how are you doing, friends? 
Today we're making the Korok flower, but making it a little more realistic. I'm starting with a teeny fake potted plant from Michael's and also some teeny yellow flowers from the garment district. This flower pot for sure needs a hanger, so I grab some cardboard from the recycling and cut a circle and cover that in fabric. I hand sew through the cardboard and give it a little test hold. We're basically florists. The pot gets a couple fast coats of paint, then I'm switching back to our flowers. I'm ripping off the rosette from the center and using some yellow and orange fabric markers to add a little depth. My best idea to attach these organza flowers is by making little wire stems with these kind of plus sign tops. So I cut some teeny leaves from other fake plants and I hot glue those on the backs of the flower and then hot glue on the wire. It seems like it's looking cute. These little guys are going to get wrapped all along the existing plant, which takes forever. I cut a square out of fabric from the rest of the cosplay and glue this around the base of the pot. A teeny bit of hot glue to connect the two and we are functional. I go back the next day and paint the floral wire a slightly more muted olive green. Look how cute she is! Okay, there's only one puzzle left to make, so see you soon! Yahaha! Ha, ha. Are you ready for it? Because we're making our fourth and final Korok puzzle prop. We already recreated the stump, the acorn, and the flower from Breath of the Wild as accessories for my Korok cosplay, and our last stop is the pinwheel. I'm starting by making a paper pattern and honestly, trying to get the leaf outline as accurate as I can takes a lot of fiddling. Once that's looking okay, I cut it out of 2mm foam and lightly heat form the curves to stay put. I also give it a little dremel off camera to smooth the edges. Honestly, I grabbed some like nail care dowels from my toiletries for this part. I cut them and sanded the edges to get these nice spokes that I'm gluing along the wheel. For the stick, I make a quick pattern, grab some wire for support, and yoink the trusty bag of warbler scraps. Look at these guys, they are ready for some primer. I also grab a sewing straight pin and make a little warbler topper for the wheel's spoke. Then it's painting time. It takes a few different coats to get the colors how I want, and I end up using a silver sharpie on the second to last coat to get the little leaf vein details. It's time for everything to come together, so I pop the spoke through the stick, and we've got a leaf pinwheel, baby! Okay, who's ready for the final few chapters next time, because it's all happening! Ahaha, <laughs> you found me, and I'm here to make the most important part of a Korok, the leaf mask. A lot of our Korok cosplay is pretty subtle, like the whole point of the outfit we made is combining the look of Zelda NPCs with a soft forest grunge aesthetic. But the cosplay still has to be recognizable, so we did make a literal giant tree trunk hood. Nothing about this leaf mask is going to be subtle, so let's jump in. I'm starting by literally just ripping an image from the game and printing out a comedically pixelated version to test the size. Also, if anyone was wondering, since there's endless leaf mask variations in the game, I just chose the one that I felt captured my whole vibe. Like, look at this little guy. This is how I feel all the time. I'm grabbing some foam and cutting out the shape, then I'm dremeling the sides to get it looking tidy. It's cute now, but it's a little flat, literally. So I take my janky printout and I do some funky, retroactive patterning to get the color blocks correct and marked. Now I'm using the same technique that prop guys use to put abs in their foam armor and slashing lines on the reverse side. This way I can heat form the front and get some really cool depth. We're almost there, y'all! It's here! We're nearing the series finale, so come back soon and see! Yahaha! Ha, it's a me! You found me! We're making a Korok leaf mask! Let's just jump in. I'm heat forming the flat shape to give it some dimension and filling in the back bits with hot glue. Then it's a few coats of flex bond. At some point in here I panic because I realize that I have totally forgotten about the nose, so I pattern a quick cone out of the thermoplastic felt aka foss shape that we made the hood out of. Some hand sewing, some spandex, painting the spandex, more hand sewing, it's literally all the same stuff we did to make the hood and I am so glad I hoarded all my leftover scraps to make this miniature wizard hat. Once the mask is fully primed, I'm again making use of leftover scraps by taking the old mask pattern and retroactively making some masking for the paint job. Oh my god, this took a hundred years. Plus there were parts I couldn't mask until I had already started painting the outer edge. Shout out again to Dimension 20 for keeping me sane during all this painting. In between coats I'm also throwing together a quick scarf to kind of mask where the bottom of the hood meets the rest of my torso. The dry times are also a great opportunity to finally finally figure out where and how the heck I will attach the four tiny props we made. This is the second to last progress log and oh my god, I'm gonna miss you guys, oh man. Haha, uh -huh, you found me for the final Korok work in progress update. It's the moment of truth for the four tiny props we made and we are figuring out how the heck these guys are going to attach to the cosplay. I think the best way is going to be getting most of them on the crossbody bag strap and I grabbed some elastic to make it happen. It's really just a lot of trial and error and hand sewing. The stump is the only exception, that one gets a leg garter because I just think it's great to have a thigh holstered tree stump. I'm still painting like the wind, keeping my coats thin and taking my time and watching Dimension 20. Genuinely, the final result is astonishing to me. I am not a confident painter and I think this looks unreal. Some buckram goes on the features and some felt on the back. It's all gonna attach with some whopper poppers. The last thing is making a quick woodsy capelet that I can just chuck greenery at. Seriously, I still have a ton of fake leaves and adding these last minute embellishments is high key my favorite part of any build. Then it's time for location scouting! This has been a wild ride and I am beyond honored so many of y'all jumped on board, so yahaha, ha, I freaking love you! And I can't wait to shoot the final look! Ha ha ha! 
beloveds, I am here in my, you know, Yuri on Ice uh, undershirt in 2022 to show you how I get in my Korok cosplay from Breath of the Wild. We've got the shirt, and then the boots, and then the boot covers. I like these boots a lot, and I don't want to sacrifice them for a single cosplay, so I made sure that everything I wear for this costume can be taken off and on. So we've got these little ankle straps that are basically stretchy fabric and some Velcro, and then we've got the, like, top covers that attach with a zipper, and then a little cover that gets snapped on over top of it. I'm gonna stick some fake leaves from Michael's in the top of the boots. Uh, I did huck loose some fabric on so that they would be a little more stable, but they're kind of just stuck in there. I think they look really, really cute. Then it's time for what I was calling an overalls shirt, but like it's an apron. Apron overalls shirt, I don't know. Um, I put that on, I fix my hair, I snap, I zip up the side, we're ready to go. Then I put on the purse, the purse full of Korok seeds that has a little glow effect to it. Then we start putting on the Korok props. I've got this little flower that attaches via a little clippy thing. I've got an acorn that I forgot to get a close up of that just slides in. And also a pinwheel uh, that I'm trying to do a, a beauty vlogger thing with. <laughs> then I put on the cablet that kind of reminds me of like those little maple seed things. And then it's time for the hood. I attach the nose with a little bit of Velcro. Then the mask gets popped on with some big snaps, aka whopper poppers. I put in the little like stabilizing hat that helps to keep its shape. And then I just awkwardly slide the whole thing on my head. And then there I am. God, look at me. Uh, it's glove time. And then we would be ready to go, except I forgot about a tiny little tree stump. But don't worry, I remembered it before I left the hotel room and we're ready to go. Yahaha. Yeah,